Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis, he's the creator God. In Exodus, he is the redeemer. In Leviticus, he is your sanctification. In Numbers, he is your guide. In Deuteronomy, he is your teacher. In Joshua, he is the mighty conqueror. In Judges, he gives victory over your enemies. In Ruth, he is your kinsman, your lover, your redeemer. In 1 Samuel, he is the root of Jesse. In 2 Samuel, he is the son of David. In 1 and 2 Kings, he is king of kings and lord of lords. In 1 and 2 Chronicles, he is your intercessor and high priest. In Ezra, he is your temple, your house of worship. In Nehemiah, he is your mighty wall protecting you from your enemies. In Esther, he stands in the gap to deliver you from your enemies. In Job, he is the arbitrator who not only understands your struggles, but who has the power to do something about them. In Psalms, he is your song and your reason to sing. In Proverbs, he's your wisdom helping you to make sense of life and live it successfully. In Ecclesiastes, he is your purpose delivering you from vanity. In the Song of Solomon, he is your lover and your loyal friend. In Isaiah, he is the mighty counselor, the prince of peace, the everlasting father, and more. In short, he's everything you need. In Jeremiah, he is your balm of Gilead, the soothing salve for your sin-sick soul. In Lamentations, he is the ever-faithful one upon whom you can depend. In Ezekiel, he's your wheel in the middle of a wheel, the one who assures that dry, dead bones will come alive again. In Daniel, he's the ancient of days, the everlasting God who never runs out of time. In Hosea, he is your faithful lover, always beckoning you to come back, even when you have abandoned him. In Job, he is your refuge, keeping you safe in times of trouble. In Amos, he is the husbandman, the one you can depend on to stay by your side. In Obadiah, he's the lord of the kingdom. In Jonah, he's your salvation, bringing you back within his will. In Micah, he is the judge of the nation. In Nahum, he's the jealous God. In Habakkuk, he's the holy one. In Zephaniah, he's He's the witness in Haggai. He overthrows the enemies in Zechariah. He's the Lord of hosts in Malachi. He is the messenger of the covenant. Moving on to the New Testament. In Matthew, he's the king of the Jews. In Mark, he's the servant. In Luke, he's the son of man. Feeling what you feel in John. He's the son of God in Acts. He's the savior of the world in Romans. He's the righteousness of God in 1 Corinthians. He's the rock of Israel in 2 Corinthians. He's the triumphant one giving victory in Galatians. He's your liberty. He sets you free in Ephesians. He's the head of the church in Philippians. He is your peace in Colossians. He is your completeness in 1 Thessalonians. He is your hope in 2 Thessalonians. He is your glory. In 1 Timothy, he is your faith. In 2 Timothy, he is your stability. In Titus, he's God and Savior. In Philemon, he is your benefactor. In Hebrews, he's your perfection. In James, he's the power behind your faith. In 1 Peter, he is your example. In 2 Peter, he is your purity. In 1 John, he is your life. In 2 John, he is your pattern. In 3 John, he is your motivation. In Jude, he is the foundation of your faith. And in Revelation, he is your coming king.